Jesus. I will physically slap you. Hello, and welcome back to the Marauders Podcast. We're recording? Yes, Nathan, we're recording. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know the ASMR part was being recording. Hold on, hold on. We're still not sponsored, but yeah, we're, we're still working still. on it. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Jamie Perigen, aka Airship Prodigy. I am your other host, Nathan Gick. And uh, we're back at it again with another podcast. And yes, that ASMR joke was completely unintentional. We apologize for the atrocity we just committed. So today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to talk about some of our favorite movies of all time just to kind of set the tone since we talk about pop culture stuff a lot but first we want to go over some stuff that happened this past week nathan you want to talk about some stuff yeah so first uh first we want to do we want to go by chronological order let's do that so tuesday of last week uh ajr dropped their hit single a hundred bad days it's been getting a lot of love from like spotify and apple Mm -hmm. music stuff like that yeah it's gotten uh good reps from all the big companies uh your thoughts on the song jamie it's really good. Uh, I like the weird kind of theater things, like that choir that they brought in. Mm-hmm. And I really like the pitched vocal that starts the the chorus, you know. Maybe a hundred bad days made a hundred good stories. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, I like that too. Um, What I like, and I go back to this every time, like with John Billion and AJR, the message. Mm, like a hundred bad days is going to make a hundred good stories. I know personally, like... Oh, my grandma has stories of my two uncles fighting when they were kids, but like they're mm. hilarious stories now. And so that's yeah. just like everything isn't as bad as it always seems. And like And even if it is, like at least you'll get a good story out of it. So yeah. there's always a bright side. Yeah, like you hear people say twenty years from now, look back at this and laugh, and you really will. Like you really you really actually It's will. true. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I like the song. Other than the message, it was great. I liked the choir part from the pre chorus. Yeah, it's I really like that part. But uh, yeah, that uh, quick, quick little uh, shout out to snippet. Them. Yeah, snippet on the uh, AJR Hundred Bad Days. Moving on, moving on. Jamie Perigen. Uh Super Bowl happened this week. Oh yes, and with it, we got a little bit more of Avengers Endgame for a trailer. Yes, we did. Um, thoughts on the trailer? I mean, there's not that much to say about it. We got some, we got some cool shots and a little bit more like teases to stuff we mm-hmm. saw uh tony stark and nebula working on something mm-hmm. that that's the one part that really stuck out to me is new information uh, i just thought it looked really cool and it helped it like got me a little bit more hyped for the movie so it's doing its job yeah um yeah uh, a lot of good things like you said uh personal favorite part of the trailer was uh, when he tightened when captain america tightens, tightens his mm, shield not yeah, his arm yeah proving he has his shield back which is awesome oh that's a good point what also, oh, spoiler alert. Bro, we gotta start putting spoiler alerts on our videos. I keep forgetting. No, we don't. All right, whatever. It's, whatever. They're fine. Um, One thing I did like about the trailer, though, is they showed Earth without half the people. Oh, yeah, that was there was some interesting moments there. Which, yeah, I thought they would still be look like the crowded place. or But no, they're going full apocalypse on this one, which is really cool. I think they that's really cool. Yeah. Because with the shots from the first Endgame trailer, you know, it was light and sunny outside, and then when you weren't outside, you were inside, so you didn't really get a glimpse, but this one showed, like, a baseball field, an abandoned baseball field, uh, the Statue of Liberty completely yeah. abandoned, a bunch of boats around the island, so that was uh, that was super cool how they did that. They're going full apocalypse mode. All right, one more thing before we get to the good stuff. Uh, this week, John Bellion and Quinn XCX, wait, no, uh, Quinn XCII. Oh, yeah. But, 92. Yeah, yeah, let's say that. They actually dropped a song together. For some reason, John Bellion wasn't like credited with it, but yeah. like we all know it's him. And like Quinn gave shout outs to him in the posts and stuff. And uh, it's okay. I'm I'm not, honestly not blown away, which is disappointing for me because I love both artists. Yeah, like uh, I know you keep saying. Ooh, shoot, bump the mic. <laughs> I know you keep saying that. I shouldn't. Why do I <sighs> keep talking? Ah, well, well, something you say is that. It just feels like they shoved John Billion in, which I, I agree with. Like, yes, Quinn's part's great, and yes, John Billion's part is great, but they just mush them together. Like, that's trying to mix your mashed potatoes and green beans into one bowl. That's just, they're both good, but like, I don't know. <laughs> Not good with analogies. Yeah. This is why I don't write songs. 
See, uh, so the song is set up into two verses, two choruses, and a bridge. And for the first uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, it really feels like a Quinn, ex- heck, Quinn 92 song with like some <laughs> belly and back bellion backing vocals Mm -hmm. and that part feels great but then after that second chorus they add this thing where john bellion is doing the lead vocal and i love john bellion and i love the thing that it does but it just doesn't sit well with the rest of the song Mm -hmm. yeah but it's still a pretty good song you should absolutely check it out if you like either of those artists because they're great and like they did work well together just mm, they could have done a little bit better you know yeah uh check out the song even though we haven't Named its title. What is it? Uh, Life Must Go On. Life Must Go On. Go check it out. Um, All right. That does it for a little pop culture update. Yep. Moving on to the interesting thing. Next meme. Uh, What was I going to say? Top five. No, I was going to say something like a transition. Like uh, onto our... No. Transition. Sorry, I stole that from another YouTube. Uh, I was going to say something, but now I forget. Okay, let's move on. So how we're going to do this is uh, we're going to go uh, from our lowest favorite. So top five movies. Lowest favorite to second favorite going back and forth. Then we're going to mention an honorable mention. And then we're going to say our all-time favorite movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we doing four, five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one? Or five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. One one. Okay, so we're going back and forth, and not like I do my five, and then you do your five. Yeah, ba- it's back and forth, okay. not. Uh, rock you- paper scissors. Who goes first? No. Yeah. Wait, does that mean I go first? I'll go first. Know. Okay. <laughs> All right, coming in, coming in at a uh, number five, a fantastic movie, uh, The Dark Knight, mm. with the. Uh, with uh, uh, Christian Bale as Batman, yep. and one of the most iconic villains of all time, with uh, Heath, Heath Ledger, Ledger, yeah, as Joker. I can't even. I barely remember the guy's name because he's just the Joker. Yep. It's it's a fantastic film. It's really well written and well paced. The action looks great. Basically, all of the plot moments with the Joker like make me like they're really satisfying too. Mm-hmm. So it's yes. just a great film. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Yes, it is really good. Um, great villain. Great villains. Yeah, um, true. Great story. Heath Ledger is the best Joker ever. Um, bars. 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 All right. Number uh, five on my list. Um, can you top the Dark Knight? Actually, I'm actually going to switch my five and four. Okay. Not one you're going to relate with. Um, Give me one second. I need to search this title. I do not want to get this wrong. All right, um, we're just going to edit this out because I'm bad at filling space. Just play some elevator music. That's actually not a bad idea. I'll okay. do that. I'll okay. do that. I found it. Okay, um, not many of you will relate to this, but Star Trek First Contact, mm. great movie. It is the second next generation star trek next generation movie so it's got uh captain picard uh riker oh, yeah. data great movie it brings back one of the most popular villains of this show the show the borg um great story great great characters uh good uh conclusion to the movie it's just just a really good film to watch it's a lot of fun it's got some awesome space battles and borg invasions and whatnot have you and it's really cool i like it a lot i might have to check that out i've actually i've never seen any of the star trek movies barring like the the newest ones right you know you would actually need to and this is not a new one it's uh old it's, it's an old. older one right yeah. you would need to see f- five of the next generation episodes to really get the borg and, and all of that and that's why we have wikipedia moving on <laughs> Uh, Jamie's number four. All right, number four is a a new film, pretty new film, one that uh it almost hurts to put it like this low on the list because I I really do love this movie, but it's uh pretty recent. Like I said, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Oh, this movie was just fantastic. I've never, I've literally never liked the character Miles Morales. Uh. I hadn't played the Spider-Man game 
for PS4, which when I played that, I liked him a little more. But I've never liked the character. It seemed just really forced. And then I watched this movie and I completely changed my mind. They complete me, They completely sold me on his character. He's a really relatable. The animation is stunning. The side characters are great. They're prominent, but not like distracting. Uh, the only place the movie would even remotely fall short for me is the villain. And I mean, they even do a good job with the villain. It's just like not the most satisfying. But it's like, it's still a good villain. So it's... Have you still not seen Spider-Verse? Uh, update, I have not seen Spider-Verse yet. Dude, okay. I'm too busy. I gotta find a Friday night. I get it, I get it. We've got to get you on that sometime. Because yeah. this, this movie is amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, I think it's still in theaters. Should be. Go see it. I will. Stop listening right now. Close the podcast. Go see this movie. It's so good. And if you're not going to go see the movie, close the podcast anyway, because we're probably not entertaining enough. Hey, hey, hey. That's for them to decide. We don't tell them that. True. We want likes. We want subs. And we want... Your money. Views. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're not monetized yet. We're working on it. Yeah, that's a work. All right. Work. Number four. My number four, which used to be number five, but now is number four, Spider-Man Homecoming. Ooh, ooh. So good. I just love this movie. I watched it again uh, a couple weeks ago. And it was just, it was so good. You've got great characters. The best incarnation of Vulture you will ever see. That's true. I watched, like, the old cartoons, and they didn't get anywhere close to this guy. Yeah, like, even the great, critically acclaimed Spider-Man PS4 game, the Vulture was meh. Yeah, he was just meh. But in Homecoming, he's a great and compelling villain, great side characters, excellent story. I, even though it's not my favorite, I feel like it doesn't fall short on many things. I don't know if you have it any really input doesn't. on that. It's just great side characters, great main character in Peter Parker. Tom Holland plays him perfectly. That's very true. Like, um, Tobey Maguire was too nerdy. And, and a bit too and, old. Yeah, and Andrew Garfield was too cool. And too old. And too old. <laughs> but Tom Holland is the perfect blend of nerdy, but almost cool, but like nerdy, so... He just really plays the character extremely well. He's the first guy who managed to get the quips in without sounding arrogant. Right. Which was cool. Really, there's just... There's so much to say, mm -hmm. but it's already been said. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you again, if you haven't seen Homecoming, check it out. Great movie. Yeah, excellent movie. Uh, Jamie's number three. All right. Uh, this is an older movie, actually. Oh. I, th I think it predates me. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know if you've seen this, but this is one of my favorites. It's another superhero movie. Uh, you may or may not have heard of it, but it's M. Night Shyamalan's movie, mm. Unbreakable. Uh, do you want to lengthen? Just oh, it'll it'll keep going. Oh, okay, good. Never mind. Moving on. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable. Yeah, uh, you might have heard this name thrown around with uh, the recent Glass movie. Uh, Glass was a sequel to that movie in Split. And Unbreakable is really interesting as a superhero movie. It's a slow burner. There's not a lot of action, but it's really dramatic. You can really feel the tension. The dialogue is great. It's it's hard for me to explain why it's gripping and why it like keeps you focused on it the whole time because it can feel a little bit lengthy, but it really does, and I'm really not sure how. It's another fantastic movie. It does keep movie. your attention. Yeah, it, do it does keep your attention. Mm-hmm. And it's got it's got uh oh Bruce Samuel Willis. L. Jackson. Bruce Willis, right? Too? Yeah, Bruce right. Willis Bruce is the Willis main character. Sam Sam Jackson is Mr. Glass. Fantastic casting choice. Mm -hmm. Really, it works on a lot of levels and the big kind of finale, it's it's all still really small scale for a superhero movie, but it feels really personal. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I really like it, is you really kind of feel with the characters. That's cool. Yeah, I have not seen that. I know you recommended to me recommended it to me. Yeah. Uh, like a few months ago, and you sounded like it was an okay movie, but apparently it's number three on Jamie's list of top five top five movies. Speaking of number three on the list, what's yours? Um, this one. Uh, a lot of people I know. A lot of people have seen it. It's a yes or no on everyone. Mm. It's it's you like it or you don't. Interstellar. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, okay. I really like this movie. Um, Matthew McConaughey is great. True. The cast is great. Side characters are a little weak. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the most the most developed character on the side is Tars, which is a robot. 
which side side character nonetheless. But uh, I just love the plot of the movie. The length doesn't feel it's three hours, but you yeah, don't yeah. F- you don't feel like you're sitting in a movie for three hours. Like you got the cornfield and then you got space. You got the two planets and then the movie's over. It's, it's like or two or three planets. I don't remember. But like it, it doesn't feel like three hours. The third act is a little weird with the yeah. with the five D. It's bookcase. trippy. Yeah. But I just love the movie. It's so good. The the cool technology, the great actors with uh, Anne Hathaway and Matthew McConaughey, uh, Matt Damon needing to be rescued in his like eighteenth movie. <laughs> I just love how True. the movie flows. The movie it's uh it's emotionally uh what's that called charged Char- not charged emotionally driven driving driven yeah there yeah there's a lot of a lot of good components in the movie yeah. Interstellar is a movie I distinctly remember seeing in theaters, and I was really entertained by it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing I'd like to point out is the visuals, like, yes. are astonishing. Even even with like the weird "you like it or you don't" climax in the bookcase, yeah, it's beautifully shot. Oh yeah. So, uh, if you haven't checked it out, it'll keep your attention, and mm-hmm. it looks great. So yeah. it's, it's worth your time. And just just uh, if you if you haven't seen it and go and see it, um, just know that the cornfield in the first act. Christopher Nolan bought six hundred mile square miles oh, of cornfield, grew corn, drove a truck through it, and sold the sold the farm. That's how amazing Christopher Nolan is. He bought six hundred square miles of cornfield, drove a car through it for the movie alone. He didn't want to CGI it, and then sold it. That's just that shows how dedicated Christopher Nolan is. Which, by the way, Christopher Nolan has made two of our top ten, two of our each of our top fives, one each of our top five. Yeah. So far. Yeah, he's... Ooh. Is he on the list again? Ooh. Is he not? Actually, I, I don't think he's on my list again. I, I just wanted to say that. that. I was going to I was gonna add uh, Inception, but mm. just didn't quite make the cut. It's good, though. Like, Christopher Nolan is one of the best directors you will ever meet. Also, Dunkirk was great, too. Yes. Just saying. He, like, he, he knows what he's doing. And I haven't seen that, but I've Both heard Dark Knight and Interstellar are great examples of him knowing what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jamie's number two. All right, number two, uh, actually has been on one of our lists already. It's been on your list already, Uh-oh. but it's, it's higher for mine. Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay. I'm sorry that we, we probably should have planned this a little better, but I don't care. I can't, Personal list. I can't not have, I can't not have Tom Holland's Spider-Man this close to the top of my list. I can't. He's phenomenal. Also... The vulture is great, great villain. Mm-hmm. The twist, I think, really works. And oh, this is something that uh, I don't know if everybody agrees with me on or not. But I really liked uh, Zendaya. I think her name is yeah, as M- MJ. Yeah, the new Michelle. New MJ, yeah. I love her character and the way she kind of plays off of Peter and Ned. Mm-hmm. Honestly, nothing about this movie disappoints me. Yeah, I love it. Spy- no- nobody has seen this movie. And their stomach has not dropped when the door opens. Mm, that's true. No spoilers, but people who have seen the movie know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, when the, the twist. Do- when the yeah. door opens, everyone's wow. stomach just dropped. So, yeah, it's just such a good movie. Yeah. Uh, I think that about covers it because we've talked a yeah, little bit about Homecoming already. already. Just Spider-Man is my all-time favorite Marvel character. Fav- all-time favorite superhero and Tom Holland is perfect, so just mm-hmm. see it if you haven't, because it's so good. And I think to our seven or eight listeners, they've all seen it. I'm just going to assume. You better that. have. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on to... Your number two. My personal number two. We've actually talked about this movie a lot on the podcast, A Quiet Place. Mm. Such a great movie. I'm just with you there. Never would have believed that a horror film was in my top five movies, but it's just so so good it's so good it just it it keeps you there it's not horror it's like a horror thriller i mean really it is a it really is a horror but like without all the without the 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 corny jumps yeah the 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 super amounts of stress which i can't say because you're so stressed that they're gonna make a noise yeah the i don't uh, know like the the jump scares and stuff are like at a minimum. Cliches of the genre yeah. that have become so overused. and it's, The genre has yeah. become really gory and stuff. And this was a great step back from that. Right. And honestly, like, I think it was probably more, like, captivating and, like, yeah. scary yeah, because it was, of it. It was just so good. It kept my attention. Like, when I, I think I said this last time on the podcast, but when I went into the theater, I was like, if 
five minutes after it starts, I'm going to go outside and have to sit through all the movie outside. It, it kept my attention, even as a horror film. First horror film I've seen. It's just such a good movie. Guaranteed recommend to anyone listening. Also, uh, John Krasinski. Oh, yes. Always a win. Always a win. Uh, yeah. I think that has this moving on to our honorable mention. Yeah, that's that's through our top top couple, yep. two, through, two through five. So honorable mentions. This is a movie that I've seen recently. I've heard a lot of talk about it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't quite like on the top of this list, but it was so different mm-hmm. that I I wanted it, that that's why it stuck out for me as an honorable mention is because it's just so different, and uh, that movie is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh no! <laughs> I've only I've only <laughs> seen it like twice, um, and it was really really recently, just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and it's still it will have me quoting it till the day I die, oh, yeah. and honestly. I've watched I've watched it through twice and every joke hits. Oh yeah. Every joke. There's not an unfunny joke in the entire movie. Yeah. And this might be a little controversial, but like the the anti climax at the end of the film. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's so funny. And it's there's, just there's so no quotable. There's no way they could have ended it. Yeah. yeah. It's so quotable. We watched it together at a friend's another friend's house. And I remember watching it, and I was like, this is not funny. Like, I <laughs> laughed maybe at three or four parts. But, like, weeks after, there, there's quotes. I keep quoting it. Are you suggesting that coconut's That's my great? Oh, it's so Your good. Your arm's off. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Look. It's merely a flesh wound. Seriously, if you haven't it's, seen it, it's on Netflix now, and it's worth, like, an hour or two of your time. I blow my nose at you. <laughs> Such a good movie. A fat in your general direction. It's, just, it's so quotable. It really is. Oh! <laughs> don't, don't touch things. <laughs> you son of a silly person. <laughs> Sorry, Nathan just knocked over our mic. Knocked over the mic. I unscrewed the thing that keeps it up and then it went down. Okay. Yeah, because that's how it works, Nathan. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Your honorable mention? My honorable mention? And this was the one or two. Mm. I asked Jamie one or two earlier, which I, I just couldn't couldn't decide which one to use. Black Panther is my honorable mention. Stop it, touching the mic. I'm sorry, that was an accident. It, it's just such a good... It's a great movie. It. I'm with you there. Excellent villain. Uh, he's yeah. Just, he's just so good. Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger is possibly the greatest villain in all of the MCU. Yeah. Even I'm counting Loki in that because he kind of got like overwritten in right. later movies. Right. It's more of an anti-hero. Honestly, his character is so compelling. His acting is so great. His one-liners hits and he's kind of right. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I love him as a villain. Uh T'Challa is awesome character. Great uh great side characters. Uh, great plot, great story. Uh, the action is not too overdone. I know in a lot of Marvel movies they overdo the violence, but yeah, the th- the third act was kind of a struggle. That's right. my only complaint with the yeah, entire movie. The, the third act is really what brought it out of the top five. Yeah, a little over CGI, but again, that's a little complaint in the scope of how good this movie is. Yeah. All right. I think that means it's time to move on to our number one, number one. picks. Uh, leave Exciting. your guess in the comments. Yeah, take, oh, and by take the way, a second. My other uh, honorable mention, just so you don't guess this, is Infinity War. I, it's not mm. that good, but it's it's still really good. Yeah, it makes sense. That's that's fair for an honorable mention. Yes. All right. So my number one pick is another movie that I hadn't seen till recently. I think I think it's a pretty old movie though. Uh, not like super old, but like two right. thousands, I probably. And it's I'm betting you, I you might not even have heard of this movie. If you haven't heard of it, I'm. It's still on Netflix. So you should check it out. Okay. But it's a movie called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Ring any bells? What? No. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh, what? This is the weirdest movie title. It is completely out of left field for what you might have been expecting. But um, it's this movie. That I, for the life of me, I can't remember who directed it. But it's somebody really good. Would you mind looking it up? Yeah. Thanks. What's it called? 
Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And it's this crazy adaptation of some comic book where it's this main character who is kind of like this pathetic dude. And then he has to, he uh, gets a girlfriend and he has to fight her seven evil exes. It sounds absurd. It's a comedy movie. It's pretty ridiculous, but it's stunning. If you, it's kind of hard to explain without showing you part of the movie, but the visuals are amazing. The transitions are amazing. There's just so much care put into the little details of this movie. Uh, it's like an Indian movie. Directed by Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright, the baby driver guy and the guy that almost did Ant-Man. That's, that's who he it was. He almost did Ant-Man? He almost did Ant-Man. That would have been... Like, Ant-Man is a great movie, but if Edgar Wright directed it, it would have been yeah. better. So, um, I don't know what, what more to say about this movie, really. It's something that I can't really explain. You kind of have to watch it. Mm-hmm. It takes a bunch of, like, weird video game tropes. It's playing on February 28th in the U.S. Oh, we might have to go see that, because this, yeah. honestly, this movie was amazing. Yeah. And it's really, really hard to explain why. Yeah, it looks super corny. <laughs> I mean, it, it is kind of corny, but it's also not. Uh, like I said, it's tough to explain, but yeah, it's yeah. easily... Like, I love all the movies on this list, but somehow this tops all of them. And it's just... It's such a weird choice, but it's also the perfect choice. Mm-hmm. That That's all I really can say about this movie. So just... That's what it is. Go check it out if you haven't. It's on Netflix. Apparently, it's playing somewhere soon. Yeah. All right, Nathan? And if any of you say you guessed that in the comments, you are lying. <laughs> um, my top is kind of the same thing. Um, old movie that probably none of you have heard of, except on this podcast. I've talked about it. It's The Sting. Robert Redford and Paul Newman in an old movie. It is... It is the greatest movie I've ever seen. It has a better twist than Spider-Man Homecoming. Ooh. And I don't want to tell you about it because it's just amazing. It's I I them's fighting words. It I You need to see it, Jamie. It's just such a good movie. The plot is amazing. You cannot you cannot go wrong with what Robert Redford and Paul Newman. So great cast, great storyline. Uh the twist in the movie is just it's so good like the first five minutes had me like whoa that's cool like before this movie i it's a movie about a con like a the big oh, yeah. um okay. and so i before the movie i didn't know what a con was so like the first like little con they did in the movie it was like whoa that's that's kind of cool even though they stole five thousand dollars from a guy <laughs> that's kind of cool so yeah it's a it the, the characters are emotionally driven um like they don't like the I don't want to spoil the movie, but like the end con they're trying to pull off is not just to get money. It's uh, it's backed by an emotional uh, aspect of the movie. It's just it's so good. I don't know what I love about this movie, but it's excellent. I there's one scene that we had to skip, but I gar- I recommend it to anyone listening. Mm. All right, that sums it up. You heard it. The greatest movies of all time, according to us. Yes. And no, nothing probably no one else. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I so, think that'll do it. Uh, that's about it for this week. Uh, let us know in the comments below if you want to see us do more top five lists. We really had fun doing this. Yeah. And uh, tell us what lists. You know, do you want to hear like our top five albums or oh, TV music. shows? Yeah. Heck, top five like actors or something yeah. like that. Just throw out some suggestions. Yeah. Um, and as always, like, favorite, and subscribe. Make sure to share this video so that we grow into an excellent podcast. And uh, I think we're going to try to get it on Apple Podcasts soon. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of a process to get it on there. but you We're know, looking we'll into to, it. Yeah, we're looking into it. We're going we're gonna to try to get all the episodes onto there. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we'll no, catch you next time. Yes, we'll catch you next time.